I had a problem with my shop compressor where when it would charge to the cutoff pressure, it would bleed air endlessly until the switch hit the cut-in pressure. And here you can see that's happening now. When the motor would then have difficulty starting back up, and if it did, the process just repeated itself. I tried replacing the switch and the bleeder line, then I realized what the real problem was. Stay tuned to find out. It turns out my problem was this check valve. And I went ahead and pulled it out of the old unit, and this is what it looked like. Let me just show you where it, I ended up disassembling and just taking off the motors on, on the unit just so I had easier access in here. It's in this half inch MIP male, or male thread, half inch male threaded hole, and it just threads into the tank from here. It has a seven, you need a seven eighth socket. Um, I had to take my compressor motor off because this thing was on so tight that even though you can you can access it with a, maybe a 7 8 wrench from here, I ended up having to get a socket and a big breaker bar to, to ease this thing off. I had to take the pump off in order to get access to it. So beware, these things are on real tight if your compressor is old. You can see that my old one is just about, dis, you know, compared to the new one, is basically... It's basically disintegrated. The entire check valve part is gone, and as you can see right through that, no air is being stopped by that. Now you probably noticed the replacement check valve here. It has the same half-inch male threads and then two half-inch compression, and it also has an extra hole in it. Now, what that's for, this is actually a 1 8 MPT hole, which has several different fittings that you could use. You could use this fitting for a push-in tube, and this fitting for a barbed tube, or you could just plug it. Now the reason for this, and one of the things I noticed that on my pump, my pump actually has this an eighth inch to, I guess that's whatever, a quarter inch copper pipe compression fitting is. I don't know what the, the size is, but it's eighth inch MPT male threaded into here. Mine has it right here on the compressor, but I noticed when I was looking for a replacement compressor, because again, I originally I wasn't sure what was wrong, and I thought maybe my compressor might be bad, and I started looking for a replacement. And what I found was most of them didn't have this extra port. They only had the one output port for the compressed air. But this line that, that runs to the, and I think, well, I, for now I'll call it a bleeder line because I think that's what it's for, but this, this goes to the, obviously, the switch, that, cor that little quarter-inch tubing that goes into the switch. But none of the other replacement compressors I, I noticed had this. And the reason is because I think in most compressors nowadays, they'll run that off of here. Now, it, it really doesn't make a difference whether you run it off here or somehow off the transfer tube that goes into here. You can run something that splits off of that or whether you run it off the head. It's all the same thing because they're all kind of getting that pressure after the check valve. So I'm wondering if it makes sense uh, to plug this and actually use this instead the reason I might do that, and I have to figure out whether or not I can I can build a, a proper standoff. I'm not quite sure because of how thick this is, but the reason I might want to do that is because if you think about it, these this is the probably the weakest point of your compression fitting connections. You've got a motor that's not only vibrating but it's producing heat, and that could cause malformations in either of these compression fittings. So if I took th this off and put it into here and ran my line to the switch from here, I could avoid that possibility of this heat heating up and warping the compression fitting on it. The other thing is, is if I ever have to replace this motor, then I'll already have this figured out because again, most, most of the compressor motors I saw did not have this uh, this feed for the uh, for the uh, the bleeder for the switch. Well, so one problem I wanted to solve was if I wanted to use that port for the the switch 
line here. I can't because the old um, check valve goes down here and inside the tank. So you really can't even, it, it just threads into the tank and you really can't access it. So I have no way to get the line out. So I had, my bright idea was I'll build a little riser for it. So initially I thought, well, okay, I'll take, I've got this little, had this little half inch gas pipe nipple and this half inch female to female coupler. And I thought, well, I'll just, you know, thread that into the tank and build a little riser for it. And that way I can just put the check valve in here. The problem was, is the check valve won't go in there. And the reason is because this half inch is a little bit too small. Because a half inch nipple, it will not fit the riser. So I have another solution. So instead of this half inch riser, build something a little more complicated, but a couple extra pieces. And what I did was I took two half inch to three quarter inch, basically like this, but it's, it opens to a three quarter inch coupler. And I got two of those couplers, so one and then one upside down, and then, it, and then connected by a, a, a small uh, three quarter inch nipple, and then a half inch nipple coming off the bottom. So that gives plenty of room as my riser for my, my check valve to thread in there. The other advantage of this, which I'm just realizing now, is also if this thing blows apart like it did before, what ended up happening is this whole thing blew apart and it, it ended up inside of the tank, right? If this one blows apart in the future, all I could do is wind up down here and then I can fish it out and it won't end up at the bottom of my tank. And that's a minor detail, but it's kind of nice. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Megalock dope here my, uh, for gas pipe thread sealant. I'm going to go ahead and, and wrench this all together and then I'll go ahead and thread this into the tank. Next I'll go ahead and, and twist this thing in. I don't need a pipe, pipe dope because it's already got sealant on the threads. 7 8 wrench. pretty good. I'm going to orient this so I can come out, come around. So basically this can come around and back, back around like that. So I'll go ahead and rebend that. Well, I attempted to take the little uh, eighth inch fitting out of my head here and it's totally stripped. So before I make something worse, I'm just going to leave this alone. It never even turned. So it's still sealed in there. I'm going to go ahead and run the line to the head here because I have no way to, to, to get this out without completely stripping it and I don't have anything to cap it with yet. So I'm going to go ahead and run the line there and I'll go ahead and just put the uh, little eighth inch plug in the, uh, the, the opening on the valve and I'll just pin that and do it some other day when I need to. Okay, I did a little bit of work off camera that wasn't all that interesting. I re-bolted on my motors and tightened the belt and went ahead and put the wiring back on the switch from the motor. And then I ran, went ahead and tightened in the uh, bleeder line to the switch. So that's all tightened in. So the only thing remaining to do, other than just put the housing on and button everything back up, is the bleeder or the transfer tube here? Oh, I also put the little cap inside that uh, that.
that fitting there. So unfortunately, um, I'll use that later, but unfortunately I can't use it right now. So I need to make a little modification. Now that I built this riser for my check valve, my transfer tube will have to cut off some of the length to it so that it, because uh, now it's going to be much shorter run. So I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so one of the issues I'm having with bending a new piece of copper is that, you know, when you start getting into like a tight bend like this, like this is ultimately probably what I needed, something like this, right? So let me take you back over to the compressor. So something that would, that would go from, transition you from that into, you know, from upward to horizontal, right? But one of the problems I'm having with that is a tight bend right there. You almost, can't, I, can't, I, I don't have the right tools to do this type of bend without marring the end of it. And you can see I've marred the end of it so much where I can't even get the compressor, the compression fitting on there properly. And I'm also creating crimps in the copper tubing. The other problem is, is even when I do have this right, you, because of the proximity here, um, and you're going from horizontal to, you know, horizontal to vertical, you often have to bend this out to get this one in, this side in, then you end up having to tighten the bottom and, or loosening the top and bottom. You end up having, having lots of uh, problems when you're dealing with compression nuts that are on different planes, right? So my new idea to avoid that issue is to make it more like a question mark, um, such that maybe I come out of here, instead of this compression fitting being directly onto the compressor, I come out of here with an elbow going up and put the compression fitting six sitting up so that both of these are dropping, both of these are attaching from the top. So in other words, this one is attached via an elbow and I'm putting downward for force to, to thread this into there and the same with that one and I think that'll make it a lot easier. The other thing is, is I can do all my bends. You can see I was using a little um, my half inch pipe bending tool, my conduit bender which isn't the appropriate tool but at least allows me to stay away from the ends here and not mar them up and just bend, do my bends uh, you know, around that, and then, you know, again, I'll have no problems uh, with this untouched end there being, uh, you know, not rounded properly because I'm trying to get a tool in there and I'm trying to crimp it and I'm just, all I'm doing is warping the copper. Uh, so I think this will be a much better approach, but it, what now I have to do is go get some elbows and fittings to bring, to, to bring this out and then elbow it up and move that fitting.
so again, uh, so I got it all done. I've got a just a little nipple here and a half inch black pipe elbow going upward. Again, the, the thought is that if both my compression fittings are pointing up, I don't have to worry about uh, unconforming one of these in order to manipulate the other piece in. The, this whole piece just drops in. And if I ever screw up something, this is one of my problems, is if I ever screw up something, I have to cut this off. The other, when it was going the other direction, if you cut one end off, the whole tube has to be replaced. In this case, if I cut it, cut this off and I have to uh, put a new compression nut on, I can then just cut the same amount at the bottom and the whole thing will just drop down a little bit. So I think this is a much better way of dealing with the transfer tube minus maybe one of those flexible lines which I you know if I ever have to redo it I may end up you know poning up the money for those one of those flex lines but this to me is the the most safest way of doing compression fittings on copper soft copper without screwing it up so now that's all back together let's see how it works <laughs> You can see some steam coming off because the leak detectant spray is being burned off, but I had a, quite a bit of a leak in that compression fitting. Unfortunately, you have to spray it while the transfer tube is on because the transfer tube shouldn't have pressure when you turn it off because that's what the bleed should, this should bleed off the pressure. So everything seems to be working fine, but yeah, I had a major leak at the bottom here, but it's just because I didn't have that compression not, nut on way tight enough, and now it seems like that's resolved. And we're starting to get good pressure building up quickly, more quickly. So let's just go to the full uh, 125 uh, cutout, cutout and see what happens. <laughs> All right, it looks like it's working. We have achieved the 120 to 125, whatever cutoff pressure we needed. It bled. You heard it go uh, bleed a little bit, but only the head pressure and the transfer line pressure. Uh, I sprayed leak detectant all over this. It doesn't appear we have any leaks on our, uh, you know, modified pipe work here. I really like the fact that now the check valve is right there where I can see it. Not that it really would matter, but right there where I can just work on it now. Plus, I lo love the fact that this transfer tube is much more easy to modify and to fit. And again, I've already sprayed all this while it was running. And uh, the, the only leak I had was there, which just mean, mean I needed to tighten it a little harder. But everything looks good. So it's at 120 right now. That's the cutoff pressure. And so... I'm just going to, I guess, leave it there and maybe just see if I'm losing any pressure, maybe check in a few hours. I mean, it's, it's okay if it loses a few pounds, you know, uh, especially when days get colder and hotter and whatnot. But uh, I just want to kind of make sure that everything else is, you know, everything's holding pressure and I have no leaks, uh, possibly at the bottom as well where my, my uh, drain off line is. But, uh, yeah, I'm happy with that, and I think that fixes the problem. If any of you guys have any other comments or any other issues with the compressor that you'd like to talk about, leave it in the comment section. Um, but thanks for watching.